All right, so continuing our look at the uh, primitive types in Java, now we're going to look at Boolean variables. Uh, Boolean comes from George Boole, who is a famous mathematician. And a Boolean variable uh, is a two-state variable, which can either be true or false. And so uh, later on, we'll see that we use these a great deal in uh, working with our if, else, and other conditional uh, logic. Okay, so let's see how that works. So uh, I figure now you're getting good at doing Java, so I've already uh, created a new NetBeans project. It's called Boolean, and then the name of my class is called Booleans. And uh, I'm just going to get right up and running here with the demo. So again, we use the same uh, approach that we saw before, where we specify the type, Boolean, and then the name is raining. And this is a variable that tells me whether or not it's raining. And we'll see that we use keywords true and false here. So I can go ahead and say true. And then the is raining value now contains the value true. Now uh, we haven't really done the if then else in Java yet, but we can actually see it because we've already learned it in pseudocode. So I'll go ahead and introduce it. It's really kind of hard to do anything with Boolean variables unless you use them uh, with conditional logic. So in Java, this is going to be if and then the expression that will be true or false goes here. Now I could do this if is raining equal equals true and we haven't seen that before. This is uh, the test for equality. So this symbol here with one equal sign really says let it be or make it. So this says, make is raining be true. This is a test. This says, if is raining is equal to true. And when you test, it can have two results. It can be either be true or false. So if I say, if is raining equals true, and then I can have a program like this, south tab, system out print line, it's raining. Okay, and then you can see what will happen here because is raining is true, this will be true, so then this, this if statement will execute, otherwise it won't print anything out. So I'll save my program, I'll go ahead and run it, and sure enough it's raining because is raining is true. Now if I change this to false, and run it. It doesn't print anything because since this is false this doesn't execute. Okay? And uh, I think because we've already seen this in the pseudocode I can cheat a little and add the else clause in. So I'll do that else. You don't have to have blocks for the if and the else if you only have one statement. But I'm going to suggest to you that it's just a good habit to put them in every time. The reason for that is half the time when you're writing actual code and working on a program, you'll find you have something to add to it and you have to put the block in anyway. And it's just better to get in the habit of putting them in all the time. So uh, now, south tab, system out print line, it's a sunny day. Okay, so either it's raining or it's not. And basically, if it's not raining, it's a sunny day. So again, this is still false. So now it prints out it's a sunny day. If I change this to true, it tells me that it's raining. And then uh, we can also do uh, some comparisons with our numeric operators. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll just leave this code in here because then it'll be in the uh, 
folder there for you at the end, but I'm going to go ahead and move this down so it'll be out of our way. And so it's still going to run. Every time I run the program, it'll print that stuff at the end. But the stuff now that I want to work with with you, I'll show you. So let's go ahead and do some uh, simple comparisons here. So uh, you know we have a series of arithmetic uh, logical operators like less than, greater than, equal to. And so let's just play around a little bit with those. So um, let's do this. If expression 5 is equal to 3 and we know that will be false south tab oops south tab shit s o u t tab there we go if you mess that up you saw what happens So this is just going to print true and false, okay? And let's go ahead and add the else in because you're pretty sharp. I showed you that, so you should be able to do that. Again, S O U T tab is the shortcut for system out print line, and this will be false, okay? So again, before I run the code, you should always look and see what you expect. So when I run it. It'll say if 5 is equal to 3, and that's obviously false, so then it'll print out false for the else. And then the rest of this is still running. And it'll go ahead and run that, and it'll say it's raining. So for the rest of this, it'll keep saying that it's raining after our other output. Okay? Let's go ahead and run that. And sure enough, false, 5 is not equal to 3. Okay? Now, instead of retyping this a bunch of times, I'll put a little comment in here. Try different comparison operators. That's a single line comment. Unfortunately, I'm almost out of space. Let's see if I go ahead and minimize this stuff over here. There we go. So let's try the less than, uh, whoops, greater than, less than. Uh, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and then not equal is the exclamation point in a single equal like that. Okay, so I'm just going to basically replace these. So how about this? Is 5 not equal to 3? If I go ahead and run that, it says true. So 5 is not equal to 3. Okay. So, and notice the inversion there. If 5 is not equal to 3, and this is going to return true, then not equal, whoops, hit a 1 instead of an exclamation, is going to return true. Okay? All right, uh, let's go ahead and try greater. So, is 5 greater than 3? Yes, it is. So, we should expect it to print out true again, and it does. And now how about if we say 5 is less than 3? And no, that's false. Okay? And then uh, while we're here, I can say is 5 less than or equal to 3? And of course, that's still false. Okay? How about if 5 is greater than or equal to 3? And that's true. Now, one thing I'll mention here is when you write these, you want to write them without a space between them. So greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Also, it doesn't work the other way. You can't say equal or less than, equal or greater than. It's only defined the one way. Okay, And then, of course, that's not equal. And uh, let's go ahead and add the equal equal in there just so you'll have it in the code. I'll put all the code for these examples up on Blackboard for you so you'll be able to download it. Okay, uh, I think we tried all of our comparisons. That's pretty good. Uh, real quickly, I'm going to show you a little gotcha here. When uh, you compare objects, which includes strings, you can't use the equal equal and the not equal operator. And so the way we do that is, uh, let's do this. So. Uh, I'll create some string variables. By the way, I don't normally create my variables inline like this. I usually 
because I've got a program that I planned out, I put them all at the top. Because I'm kind of uh, showing you stuff, I'm doing this in the middle. You don't want to do that. You should declare all your variables at the top of the block right after uh, the declaration for the main method. Later on, when we create our own classes, we'll create class variables up here, uh, and then we'll have to declare them as public or private. Okay, don't worry about that right now. So um, let's do some experiments here. So string first name equals quote Tom. and uh, string last name equals wolf like we did before and then let's do another one string another first equals Tom all lowercase okay all right, let's play around a little bit with our string. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy this block so I can save time while you watch. You don't have to watch me type then. But I'm going to change it too. So this first part here, and let me get rid of the uh, comparators there too. All right. So I just want to use this part of the block over and I save some time by copying it. Now to test equality with strings you use the string function. So I'll say if uh, first name dot equals and notice how as soon as I put the dot in there this is a list again of all of the uh, methods that strings know. So that's a real nice part. If you can't remember quite exactly how a method works, uh, you can bring it up. Uh, what the hell happened there? Oh, there we go. We're off screen. Okay, so uh, I want equals to test to see if two strings were equals. There it is. I can click on it, double click, or hit enter after I selected it. And now args is what I'm going to test it against. So this can be another variable or it could be a literal. So if I want to test against a literal, I'll type it right in. And uh, we should expect that this will be true because first name is equal to Tom, uppercase T, lowercase om, and that's what I typed here. So let me run my code again. Remember it'll say after this that it's raining. So it says true. And uh, we still have the true from the first statement here, too, okay? Again, I want to leave that in for you so you have it. But I'm going to show you how I'll comment that out so I'm not using that. So I'll go ahead and put a comment block in here. And that keeps the code in the file for you to look at it, but it deactivates it. Notice how NetBean is showing me that, okay? And I'll... Um, Hopefully, you should be able to figure out that you can reactivate this by removing the beginning and end of the quotes block there. So now I, the only code that's actually working is this line here, then it skips the code block, and then it runs all this. So now when I run it again, I'll only get the uh, single statement there where it says true. If I want to, I could go ahead and comment out the is raining too. Maybe we should do that now since we know how. And so now you got to be careful because you see that I don't want to remove that. The end of the if block is right there, the if else block. So that's where I want to put the uh, closing one. If I comment this out, that's actually the end. Notice how NetBean shows me, let me do that again, of my main method. There's the uh, thing that it matches. It's up here on main. And so if I took that out, my file would be off. It wouldn't run correctly, and I'd get an error. And it wouldn't compile at all. OK. So name equals time is true. Now let's, uh, well, and we ran it, so it says true. Let's, I'll show you one more time. I've just commented that out. So now only that code is working. It says true. 
I'll go ahead and backspace, hit a lowercase t. Now that means first name is Tom with a big T, and this is Tom with a little, so equal should be false, and indeed it is. Now, in, in addition to equals, a lot of times when we compare values, we don't care if they're exactly equal or not, and then we can use equals ignore case. So let me just pull that up so I don't have to type it equals ignore case. You see it down there. And so now this will be true because lowercase tom is the same when you ignore case as uppercase t lowercase om. So I should say true now. So let's go ahead and run that. And sure enough it does. So now any mat mess of case will actually match. So I can actually make his capital M and that'll still be true, okay? So the important thing to get here is that when you compare strings, you don't use the equal equal or the not equal operator. You use the equals ignores case. Okay, let's take this off. If I want to negate this, if I want to say if first name is not equals to Tom, then I'll go ahead and put the negative sign in there, the negation operator. Now, let's look at this. First name is T-O-M with a capital T. Equals is looking for an exact case match. This is T-O-M, but it's got a capital M instead of a capital T. So they don't match. And so if I say, if it doesn't match, that's two negatives, that makes a positive, right? So this basically is going to be false. And then the negation says not false, which means true. So if this is true, then it'll print true. So it will print true. And I run my code, and sure enough, it does. If I take out the negation, it'll be false again. And there it is. Okay? So again, I just wanted to show you how you could uh, do the, the strings. And then for numbers, we use the comparison operators, which are Boolean operators. You should be familiar with those from basic math, less than, greater than, etc. Um, all right, I think that's enough here. We've got the uh, basics here, the Boolean down. Again, you don't really do much with it except in control structures like this if then else and the uh, while loop that we'll see here directly as we get further into Java. Okay, I hope you're enjoying the course and learning a lot about Java. Um, if you have any trouble with any of the work, don't hesitate to email me or contact me in class. Uh, I don't want people to fail. I want you to do well and succeed.